All right, time for another draftphysics.com. Debatephysics.com also, but uh, the debate really just has to be, you know, I'll answer your questions if you will answer my questions, and you really can't get these people to answer the questions. I mean, do they really believe it takes 25 times the fuel to spin a motor five times as fast? I mean, that's what their physics says is the requirement. So why don't we see that in reality? And we don't see it. It's just nonsense. It's so silly. 100 times the fuel to go 10 times as fast. Uh, 100 times the damage. Oh, come on. All right, so possible experiments. So I've been thinking about levers. I really do. <laughs> you know, it, is, it is something so simple. And this part of me says it just got to work. Um, and different ways to engineer them um, to, you know, prove the point. And so just logically, I'd say this proves it. You can't really get around it. I mean, if you think about it in all different ways, it just doesn't matter what you do, how you do it. It's got to produce these results. <clears throat> so if we had a spring, <clears throat> we are we can compress the spring or we could stretch the spring so we could do either one so I guess this would be just as good a spring this way and you move it this way okay <laughs> yeah, either way would work um, hey both springs would still work okay and that's going to be your force in and your force in is always going to be a con constant amount you're going to swing the lever down a specific constant amount and in both cases okay you're and in this case, we don't really care what the weight of the lever is. So it could be made out of steel. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to have both masses on it, a two mass and a one mass. And the location is one distance and the location is two distances. And it's going to be swung exactly the same both in both tests. Okay, so the lever is going to have both weights on it. Okay, for the test. Um, so it's exactly the same force from the spring exactly the same mass moving everything is exactly the same all right and the only difference is you're going to stop it with a stop and one of them you know through some you're going to have some device where either you know there's a a pin or some other device that locks them in place so you'll do the experiment with this one locked into the lever so it can't come out so the two mass is stuck but the one mass is free and it can just fly off. So when the lever swings and hits, the one mass flies off. Now, logically, you can go and you do this the other way around where you lock the one mass and then you let the two mass free. And you logically know there's just no way around it. The lever's moving the same speed in both cases. There's nothing else to give the thing's momentum. This has to go twice the velocity. It has to, okay? And this has to go one velocity. There's just no options because of the speed that the lever's moving. The objects aren't going to go any faster. They're going to just go whatever the speed was of the lever, and the speed is going to be identical in both cases. So there's just absolutely no way to avoid that outcome. <clears throat> now, the only question would be, does it the lever have more stored momentum? I mean, does it hit this thing harder? in one case than in the other case and the argument is no it can't <laughs> okay because technically in both cases the mass that's going to be missing okay so the leftover lever is going to hit and the leftover energy is going to hit this thing and in the case where the two is locked it's a two at this velocity okay so it's going to be the same momentum okay as a one locked in this position and you really can't avoid it always hitting this with the same authority. So I suppose you could put a spring on here, you know, some measuring device, um, some other way to measure force. Okay, I don't know exactly what a great mechanism for doing that, but the impact force is going to be the same in both cases because you're releasing the same amount of momentum, and that's obvious because you're going to see the the momentum released. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to see that the only momentum you're, that's leaving is going to be the same in both cases, and there's no way to logically get around it. So, 
I think this would experiment would do it, right? This is sort of the, you couldn't, <clears throat> you know, like I said, even drawing it, I'm saying, okay, what's the counter argument? How could somebody possibly argue that there was a cheat in here somehow and somehow the two, you know, the, <laughs> the one mask got some sort of advantage or there was some other thing because it's going to be exactly the same amount of momentum left in the bar. It's going to hit this thing just as hard when it lets the two free as when it lets the one free. So yeah, it really isn't any place for it to be hiding. Um, any cheat, any deception. All right, so it just basically proves what I've already proven, okay? I mean, frankly, by creating the oscillator, right, with the one mass all the way out there and four masses here, and it oscillates perfectly. I mean, that already sort of proves the case. All right, anyway. So, an alternative version, the one I thought of first, actually, that I liked. Same idea here. Okay, sorry, I just you know, put a spring on here. But, uh, okay, so you're going to use the same exact force. And in this case, I was thinking of steel or glass, but the idea would be is that you would have a good surface for hitting them. Instead of launching them, you're going to hit them. And probably the idea would be to hit pendulums. You know, So your, your stick is going to move this way, and the pendulum would be swinging this way. You know, or conversely, the stick would move this way, and you're just going to bang, hit the pendulum. And so, you know, with like a half, you know, embed the, the masses inside this. So that, you know, I just, just to make sure that it's, it's like there's the same amount of contact. All right. And it's just sort of an interesting question <clears throat> because now you have the mass of the entire lever. And so you're not hitting a one mass into a one mass. So it's not a Newton's cradle. But in a sense it is because all the other one mass can do is go the velocity of the thing that hits it. So it's really just saying you're going to transfer the velocity that this thing has. And that's all it can transfer is it's a velocity. And uh, so you're, you're stuck with the same argument that, um, you know, you hit this pendulum with a one mass. It can't go faster than this one's going. It's going to go the same speed that this is going. And it's, you know, the same thing's going to happen here. It's going to go the same speed. There can't be any excuses about the, the you don't have to worry about the weight or mass of the lever because it's going to be not the same mass as this weight or this weight. It's, so it's not really going to be an issue. And I guess the thing to see would be is if this, without a stop, okay, when it hit, how much energy did the lever keep moving with? That might tell us something. Um, but I'm thinking the transfer is going to be exactly as before. You're just going to extract the momentum. This one's going to have the same momentum as that one's going to have. It's going to extract the same much. This one's going to extract it by going twice the velocity. This one's going to extract it by going one velocity. So I think that will also work. And it gets rid of the problem before when I did the experiment on my porch is this throwing problem. You know, where you're, you have something on it here and the lever's turning. And as it turns, it's changing its position on the object. So you're really starting with it further all away and then it gets closer so, so it's never at the same, the right position. So the lever, it's changing its location on the lever through the arc of the swing. And you end up shooting it either this way or that way or some other way than straight. And so this would at least get rid of the non-straight because you could have a solid impact right at the vertical and guarantee that... You know, you could shoot both objects this way, or you could shoot, you know, but you'd be shooting them in the same direction, guaranteeing an equal contest, where in the other case, the amount of arc is different, and so they would swing, you know, it was harder to get um, a fair, it's harder to keep the energy in the object because this thing tended to want to slide on the lever, <laughs> if you get my point, right? They're trying to, as you're going from, the lever being in this position to the lever being in this position, 
the object tends to slide on the lever, so the whole thing I'm talking about. And so you're kind of ruining your contact with the lever. So if it's embedded, you know, these could just be spikes, I guess. I would imagine you could just put, you know, a hard metal spike at this location, you know, the one distance and then another hard spike. And it should be the same contact as if it was a Newton's cradle. It should be a nice elastic hard smack. Um, and theoretically, there should be this instant transfer of the energy. So I think that'll also work. It shouldn't be beyond my capacity to construct such a device, I imagine. Now, the other point is, is whether to do the pendulum thing. Now, the trick with the pendulum thing is, you know, you have to be aware of this stupid arc problem. You know, that, that the, the, the measurement can't be linear this way. The measurement has to be a measurement of how high did you go. So <clears throat> the problem with using pendulums is you got to measure the height, not the, not the distance this way, because they're not proportional. The linear distance isn't proportional. The height difference is proportional to the energy. Um, <clears throat> and so that's sort of a pain in the butt. Um, and the, you know, this, I guess, the doing it on a sheet of glass with round objects that have a very small amount of friction uh, would probably be the way to go. So, yeah. So, anyway, that's that. I guess we could, you know, partially deal, since I'm here, with a Piero comment. <laughs> but I don't see the point of it, frankly. Okay, he wants to... You know, he always wants to just change the subject. So instead of dealing with the simple truth that it's a different amount of energy if I do two things, right? So if I drop something four times the height in free fall, we know it's two units of time, okay? And it hits with a certain force, all right? And then if I did the same thing where I dropped it in four increments of time, Okay, now I do have four increments of time. I mean, the fact is it'll fall this first distance just like this. This is one unit of time. This experiment will be identical to this experiment, right? So there's no argument about what's happening. This is going to be one unit of time falling. This is one unit of time falling. This is one unit of time falling. This is one unit of time falling. It's clearly four units of time falling. All right, there's an, is, there can't be a possible argument there, right? Okay, and that doing this, theoretically, like I said, if I just built this structure, all right, this staircase thing, okay, and we just measured the change in the pressure, right? I could have a regular, um, you know, I could take the four balls right here, and you still see that? No, most... Almost, almost, oh, wrong way, that way, okay. Um, and I can just drop them one at a time. So as I drop this one, it hits this surface, registers a force. I drop one, it hits the surface, registers a force. There's just no doubt that that's going to be the same as me just dropping these one at a time. And the question is, obviously, I can't make dropping these one at a time I can't compress this spring four times. You know, I can't I can't make four impacts that add up to okay, the same weight. All right? Because the thing bounces back. You know, I don't I don't get to keep the weight I have already put on it. I don't get to keep it. All right? The spring pushes back. So they're not happening in the same time. And so I can't just you know, I can't, I just, I can't make the four pounds dropped <coughs> this distance. Okay, let's say this is one centimeter. All right, that's the distance where you double something's weight. If I drop four pounds one centimeter, it's going to weigh eight pounds. I can't drop one pounds, okay, and, and expect it to weigh eight pounds. <coughs> if you, you know, I can only expect it to weigh two pounds, two pounds, two pounds, two pounds. So until you figure out a way to make something that's happening slowly 
and convert it into something happening quickly, you know, that's the, the real liability. Now, a lever can do that to some extent, but we know there's losses in all these mechanisms, and so I can't do a direct conversion. I mean, I can't take, I can't take a bowling ball's energy, let's say even an eight-pound bowling ball's energy, and I can't just convert it into a bullet. So I can't go from eight pounds to eight ounces and put all of the energy into the eight ounce object. So that's the the reason why it's not perpetual motion is because it's hard to convert slow things into fast things, just like it's hard to convert, say, heat, uh, you know, into a speeding bullet. Right? I could have a thousand watts of energy in the form of heat, but it's kind of hard to convert that directly into a force so <clears throat> that's the problem but I mean there's just no denying the truth so I mean if Piro wants to argue that the one pound okay the one object falling in two units of gravity weighs the same as the four so this is eight pounds okay this <clears throat> well we know it's two pounds here <laughs> okay so What's he, he thinks it's going to gain six pounds here? Well, it's not. Okay, so um, it can't weigh the same. I mean, it can't put. They can't have the same impact force. So the fact is, is the impact total impact force of this versus this is just a fact that yes, it is a different amount of energy. But the fact is, is you can't convert bang, 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 bang into twice the velocity. At least. There's no simple way to do that. So unless you can draw me the picture of some kind of ratcheting device or something, I don't know. You know, you need some kind of device that can accept the energy in one pound increments and turn it into four pounds of weight or pressure. And um, I don't know how to do that. So, so until you show us how to do that, you're not going to be able to make and take advantage of the fact that yes, it is in fact dropping it. You just in the fact is you gain less energy dropping it than you gain if you drop it slowly because you're in the gravity longer. And but there's nothing you can do with that fact. Um, yeah, so I don't know how to explain that to you exactly, but um, let's see. So this way you have four pounds, let's just say that's what it comes out to. And this only has two pounds. So the argument is, is that I should be able to take this four pounds of pressure and convert it into two pounds of launching energy. But how do I do that? <laughs> yeah, that's the question. All right. Uh, I don't have an answer to that question. <clears throat> so, um, but again, to me, it's a change of the factual subject. So, you know, if we were driving a nail into a something, it's clear that hitting it four times, okay, I'm going to argue is more force four times with this gravitational force, four units of gravitational acceleration. The acceleration in this whole portion here is exactly the same as the acceleration here. That's why it only lands with 19.6, is because it got the same exact acceleration. So you just, there's no other way to look at it, <laughs> you know, than to point out that, yes, this is a one unit of acceleration, two units of acceleration. Here, I got four units of acceleration, four 9.8s. How, how do you undo that? <sighs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, anyway, maybe I'll pause and I think there's got to be some way to explain how <laughs> you just, it's just the way it is. All right, I'll pause and see if there's anything else. All right, I think I, <laughs> at least I can turn his own paradox on him, okay, <laughs> just to argue their, what their theory would say in this same circumstance. So in this circumstance where you have four units of mass, okay, and you're going to drop it this one unit of distance, 
right? And you're going to have a certain impact weight. Impact weight. All right. Um, <clears throat> well, by their theory, because I'm using this heavy object, right? Then every time the ball hits the ground, it puts 2x the energy into this heavy object, right? So it's 2x there, and then it's 2x here, and then it's 2x one, two, three, yeah, and then the ground here, uh, 2x and 2x, right? So I have eight times the force, eight times the impact weight, you know. So it's four units of impact weight, four s drops, you know. So it's four impact weights, okay, four times the weight. Um, so by their theory, it doesn't work either. So there's no point in pointing out, you know, there's no point in saying to me, well, there should be some mechanism where I can convert these four single hammer blows, the light blows, into one twice as fast blow. But the argument is, is they're not, you know, this is more energy, but there's no way to convert it into, uh, you know, two units of time. Something happens over four units of time, you can't convert into something that happens in two units of time. And that's the limitation. But I don't know how else to describe that. But anyway, I'm just saying their own theory doesn't work either. Okay. All right. So that's uh, probably enough. <laughs> so we'll just leave it there. Anyway, we'll see what gets built eventually. Um, so the Dispar lab, as far as I know, he's not going to bother doing you know, the simple thing of just showing the pendulum swinging and then actually uh, controlling how much energy he puts into the pendulum and through that simple mechanism finding out that he can tell uh, by how far the pendulum bounces and reflects how high it goes, how much energy it has. Uh, but we'll see. All right. So till the next time and such. I mean, I could explain that for a fourth time, but you know, I've already done the videos. If you're going to do the three to one mass experiment, there's the, the idea of doing frame rates when things are constantly changing their velocity is kind of bullshit, especially when the frame rates are counted over half the motion of the object. So you're going from it going half its speed, final speed to its full speed um, in your average. So you're not coming close to getting its impact velocity. You're getting some other velocity. I'm not going to explain that a fourth time. No. No. All right. Till the next time and such.